Okay, the robot has spoken. The dog has barked. It is time to go. Hi, um, my name, thank you for that introduction, Rodney. My name is Kit. Um, I use uh, she, her, they, them, and he, him pronouns, so it's impossible to misgender me. And if you try, I'll be sad, so please don't. Um, I am so excited to have this opportunity to talk about one of my great passions, which is giving people the tools to make stuff, stories, visual pieces, whatever they want, despite the fact that maybe you don't have a residency, maybe you don't have a degree, maybe you don't have the things that um, a lot of people seem to think are necessary for making good art. Um, I would argue not only not necessary, they're nice to have for sure. I have a degree. Um, I don't have an advanced one, but I have a degree and I've taken classes, but a lot of the things I do regularly, I've never taken classes for. So I think it's just really vital to that everyone be able to do the things they wanna do and um, not let people tell them they can't just because they're not part of whatever click. I hate clicks, that's why I'm not a theater kid anymore. So let's get started. Um, a few, ho ho, ha ha, okay. I understand technology. Um, before we start, let's talk about accessibility and share a few disclaimers. So the first thing is uh, you may have noticed there is not live closed captioning on this. Um, as Rodney mentioned, it is going to be recorded. At that point, it will be on YouTube, which has not perfect, but fairly good uh, closed captioning system. So um, my apologies if it's not something you're able to understand right now, but hopefully when it is recorded, we'll kind of get to a better place of more people being able to access it. Um, I also naturally speak rather quickly. Um, and sometimes I have to remind myself to slow down. If I'm just going off on my hamster wheel and you're like, I don't know what's happening, feel free to drop it in chat and I will slow down. Um, another note is that the um, sort of subtitle of this workshop is um, making what you don't have work for you, which is sort of the theme of there being constraints. This is not meant to be a comprehensive, every possible limitation will be addressed uh, in terms of art making, because I am not the person to teach that. I would have to get a whole bunch of people involved. This is one workshop. It'd be really cool to have an entire like thesis on how to make that happen. And I acknowledge both my privilege and my limitations in having that. So. If you're like, what about this? What about this? I know this is not like a total, that's the crows. Crows are my um, special animals. So they're they're letting you know that I'm doing my best. I acknowledge that there are limitations to this conversation and um, yeah, it's an ongoing conversation. Another thing is um, I will be checking chat as I go. Um, and if you have a question or anything, feel free to um, use the raise hand function on Zoom or if your screen is on, physically raise your hand. Um, I welcome all questions with time constraints. If you wanna fight me, that's fine. I understand. I also want to fight me, um, but I just don't have the time right now, but I will be leaving my um, social media and email at the end. Um, you can always talk to me and you can also do that to like not fight with me, but just, I want you to know I'm not shutting you down. I just, I don't have time to go into a million different discussions, but I definitely welcome questions. Okay. Thank you for listening to that. It's always important and one of my values to make sure that we do as much as possible to have everyone be part of conversations. So this is a trash wonderland approach to doing things. You may ask yourself, what does that mean? Who am I? What is trash wonderland? I will attempt to answer those questions. My name, as I said, is Kit. I was in school for theater. As I mentioned, I ran away. I still do theater because I don't let theater people tell me what to do. I created trash wonderland because basically I was in debt to this school um and they were like you have to make sets now and I was like wow um okay I guess I'll just gather garbage and make it work and people really liked it and they were like what even is this like why is there a balloon hanging from the ceiling and why does it represent the sky and why do I like understand that it's the sky like it doesn't make sense and I'm like well it's trash wonderland and I am its king and people were like cool trash wonderland and I was like cool and I've just literally been doing that ever since um I don't believe in limiting myself to like, oh, I was a playwright, so I write. I do write, and I also make visual art, and I make music. Um, most of my published and produced works are in theater and in literary magazines and anthologies. I do have a book upcoming uh, with a small press, so um, yeah, um, that's most of like what my work out in the world is, um, and I think traditionally it'd be like, oh, that's what you specialize and then you do these other hobbies. It's more like all the stuff I make visually and sonically and all these things completely funnels into what I'm putting into my writing without doing all these things, my stories aren't the same. 
Um, and that's part of what I'm getting at with creating under constraints is a lot of times the things you um, are making may not be obvious to how they relate to the larger whole, but I think they're completely vital and vital for getting you out of ruts too. Cause sometimes you'll sit down and be like, I have to do this thing. And then it's not coming. And you're like, oh, I guess I just won't do it. I challenge you to think of it as like, okay, it's not happening in this form. What can I do? Because if nothing else, you can make something and then just like write a monologue from that thing. Um, if you know me, you know I'm very passionate about a short story I read like 15 years ago about a gas station that falls in love with the street lamp outside. Um, you can do anything. Look at a street lamp and write about it. It's The world is out there. Just don't let anyone tell you what to do. Don't let anyone tell you that the stories of street lamps don't matter because they do. There's a whole band called Street Light Manifesto. So we know this to be true. Okay. So. You may think, oh, trash wonderland, trash, garbage. I'm going to like roll around the streets and have no order. And that's great art. And I'm going to like wreck myself and it's going to be awesome. And Kit is encouraging me to like, you know, just become a hurricane. Yes, but I'm also encouraging you to think of your hurricane-ness being contained on some level. So freedom to be a wreck and a girl boss. A girl boss is gender neutral. It may sound like it's not, but I think a girl boss is like someone who has the spreadsheet, Excel, doing the things. You are in charge of your destiny. And capitalism may tell you that you have to like be employed to do that. That's not true. Um, I started making spreadsheets and all these things professionally. I was assisting nonprofit companies. I work retail. And so I had to learn a lot of, you know, organizational stuff. And one day I was like, what if I just did this for my art? Like, what if a boss didn't tell me to do those things and I just did those things? Um, what's the worst that could happen? Um, actually nothing bad happened. It actually really helped. So spreadsheets, lists, goals, whiteboards are your friends. I would argue that popular culture's idea of like the artist just sort of doing things um, and then someone being like, wow, that's really good. You should like record an album. That's a fiction. I've literally never heard of that happening for anybody. And when I have, it burns out really quickly. So I, I like to see the process of making art as that like sort of woo thing and then you actually sort of put your nose to the grindstone in terms of organizing like how your projects how you're getting them out there how you're communicating and finding collaborators um and as i say here being organized does not mean you are not free to get wild it actually gives you more freedom it may be counterintuitive but actually you are creating the space for you to do your wild dance because it's not just that all the time like if you're just like running around doing whatever that's really fun and it can, you can get a lot of energy out there, but you'll also probably get tired and then you might not have even recorded what you were making. So it might just be something you did to like sort of get the dopamine and then just, it just sort of exists, um, which is valid. And I think having, it gets you more toward what you want. And then you'll look at your projects and be like, wow, I wrote this many chapters and submitted this many essays. Um, now I get to run around and do whatever. Um, you can have both. That's why the little Pegasuses are, they're facing each other because the dialectic, two things that seem counterintuitive can be true at the same time. Um, I won't go in to the therapy of that, but there's a whole world out there of two things being true at the same time. It's very helpful in life. So what do I mean by like my girl boss containing energy thing? So these are some examples of what I have in my space. Um, one constraint is not having, you know, your magical, artists loft with you know you know how in movies they always have those high ceilings and like they can just throw things everywhere and you're like wow if once I have that I'm going to make as much art as I want you can actually you don't have to wait for that to happen I mean you could but then you'll probably not make stuff because it might not ever happen not to like rain on your parade a lot of us are limited in terms of being able to move to high ceiling lofts um so on my wall I wrote down a little bit of um inspiration for me in terms of my fiction work. So um, I wrote down on the left hand side, um, the difference between a short story, novelette, novella and novel, which are just long length of projects. So I move a little um, post it, the little orange guy, once a project has hit that. And then when I see it, I'm like, wow, this project is a real thing outside of my imaginings and journals and computer, I can see the progress I'm making. And then on the right hand side, I have both my wall calendar and my agenda. And this is not prescriptive. This is not like do this, or else. This is just an example of someone with a very hectic brain, how I managed to tap into that organizational structure. It can look however you want it to look for you. And this is what I settled on. 
after experimenting with a lot of different things. It wasn't like I read some tip on organization and then I was just like, okay, cool. I'll just do that forever. I've cycled through different things. For me, actually physically making a calendar was what worked best for me. As you can see, um, I sort of made the calendar into art. It makes me more likely to use it if I can like scribble all over it and not get super precious about it. But if you don't like to collage things, you can get a calendar. They're actually super on sale right now. I work retail, I can tell you they're like a dollar right now. You can just go get one. Um, yeah, so you can see I have all my deadlines and stuff both in my personal life and in my writing life on the calendar. And then each day's individual structure is written in the agenda. And I will actually flip through, set a deadline for someone's thing is due, make it due the day before. I know I'm doing it. I know I'm not tricking myself, but if I can get something in the day before, it gives me the room to like, oh no, I forgot how to convert to a PDF. The font is terrible. Everything is terrible. I'll just give up. Like, just like, maybe you are in college and this is how you, I was like this in college. I was just panicking at like 1159. Um, it's super anxiety provoking. I like to reduce anxiety. Um, so that's my, my way of doing it. I know I'm doing it. I know that there's secretly 24 hours, but it helps. And then, okay, this is where we get into real, like, ooh, it's a spreadsheet. And people will see it and be like, wow, you are so fancy. I cannot, a spreadsheet, dang. It's actually, like, on Google Sheets, it's free. You don't have to pay for Excel. Like, you can just make them. Like, I know Google is not the best company in the world, but what is? Zoom is not either. No offense, don't shut me down. But, like, companies are bad, okay? Google makes a really good free sheets program, which is basically the exact same functions as Excel. If you need to do math and stuff, I'm sorry that you can't really do it that well in sheets. But if you need to do just tracking of things, this is how I organize that structure. I have like um, little columns of like where I'm submitting it, what I um, ended up submitting, the date I did so, and yes, no. Um, and sometimes I leave like notes on the side of like, oh, this person said, you know, it was good, but it was too long. Um, submit again, but make it shorter. Um, so I, I contain both submission opportunities and things I submitted. Um, it's really good to keep track of things you've submitted. And I know like I'm getting a little ahead of myself. You're like, that's all great kit, but like, what? how do I make stuff? We're, we're gonna get there, but I, I feel like it's good to think about what's gonna happen. It motivates me to be like, it could exist in the world and people could read it and see it and listen to it. Um, you can put the cart before the horse. Like you can do whatever you want. Um, so I record both my submission, um, the things I have submitted. Um, the reason that's a good idea is because you don't want to accidentally like submit the same thing to the same people. Or if they say like, please wait three months to submit. And you're just like in their email, like a week later. And they're like, wow, this person can't read directions. And I'm mad about it. You just save yourself. You can check your list and be like, oh, I already submitted to them. I'll, I'll wait six months. Um, and then, yeah, I also record like anytime I see any opportunity whatsoever, I record like, does it have a theme? What are they looking for? Who are they? What's the website? That's an important thing. Record the website. So you're not just like a lot of these things don't even pop up on like the first page of Google. So you're just like running around, just like make your life easier. That's my motto. OK. So. As I said, that's all super cool. I'm so inspired. I'm going to submit to all these things. And we're, I'm going to give you like actual like websites and, and like accounts and these because I was really overwhelmed when I first started of like, oh, everyone has this secret no one went to school or has all the artists told them who to submit to. That's true. You're not wrong. There are people with that. Um, I stopped writing and submitting things for like years. And so when I came back, the world was entirely different. And I sort of trolled through and found stuff. And I'm going to give you the first step so you're not it's not as much work. I'm not gonna like give you everything, but I'm gonna give you like, at least so you don't think this is some secret magical thing that only certain people can access. Anyone with an internet connection can access these things. So this guy is a magpie. He's on top of a notebook. This is my artistic practice. Um, magpies, so there's some controversy about magpies. Everyone thinks of magpies as creatures that steal and they like shiny things like all corvids, like ravens, crows. They like shiny things um, and they collect them and they secret them away and you can trade with them. Um, and then the scientists did a study about magpies and they were like, all of you are wrong. They don't steal. I don't know where you're getting this from. And then all these people were like, um, that's a lie. Like I have been feeding this magpie for years and then he'll just like take my car keys. And then other people know like I be magpie and he's a thief. I love him, but he's a thief. So 
that just goes to show there are no rules. Like you can be a magpie who like steals things and the scientists can say you're not a thief, but you can still be one because scientists are just people. Um, so I believe that magpies steal. I've seen it happen. Um, I'm not stealing. I'm just going around the world, looking at shiny things and putting them in my notebook and secret them away like a magpie. Um, because it's all material. That's like my biggest thing for Trash Wonderland. It's like when you go to the website for my web Trash Wonderland project, it literally is like, it's all material. Everything in your life is material. You can just gather it and you don't lose it, but it gets really important. Um, monkeys do steal too. <laughs> um, I saw this video of them stealing someone's like sunglasses and I was like, work. Um, but yeah, be, be a monkey, be a magpie, take everything. Don't, I'm not saying shoplift. I'm saying like of the things around you. And I'll give more examples to what I mean by that. Okay. So something I like to ask people in terms of like starting a story or starting a painting or starting anything is what have you heard recently? Um, out in your world, what's a funny thing someone said? What's something that you said and gotten because why do you say it that way? What a wild way to say it. Just what is sort of latched into your brain that you can't get out of. Um, and if like, it doesn't always have to be auditory. Like what things have you experienced with your senses in the world? Like, I think that you can hear touch and stuff like, oh, I like, you ever like touch a plant and you're like, it's like sticky, but not wet. And you can write about that too. Like, just like opening your mind to the world around you, stealing it and then building off of it. So part of the reason I think about this a lot is because of probably one of my favorite quotes about the process of writing. Um, this is from Christopher Isherwood, um, who wrote The Berlin Stories, um, which is the short story collection that the musical um, and film of the musical Cabaret are based on. Um, the central character is essentially a stand-in for the author who was going around Berlin um, just before the, um, you know, everything that, that happened with World War II. And he's in this cabaret and he basically is just recording like the people around him just watching the world ending and just sort of writing his short stories. And there's a passage that reads, I am a camera with the shutter open, quite passive, recording, not thinking, recording the man shaving at the window opposite and the woman in the kimono washing her hair. Someday, all this will have to be developed, carefully printed, fixed. So, that really is what it is. Like, there's a lot of different songs and stuff about this idea of like, a, an example I always think of is Finishing the Hat from um, Sunday in the Park with George, of the idea that you're just sort of watching the world and it can be lonely. So I think it's really good to like, also have connections, you know? <laughs> so you're not feeling like you're just sort of like recording, like he says, um, but it is sort of vital to the process of storytelling be sort of intaking and you know the whole like uh Ernest Hemingway misquote um write drunk edit sober um I'm not literally suggesting that um it didn't work out for him and it doesn't work out for most people but the idea of like just sort of recording everything and then you later edit it someday this will have to be developed carefully printed fixed you are not editing while you're recording that is not how film works and I don't think that's how art works if you're constantly being your own censor, being like, oh, people won't like that. Oh, that's not how I want it to be. Oh, you're going to get this place, or at least I speak from personal experience, or like the idea of what it is, is overtaking what is actually happening. So you end up in this meta in your head zone where you're just like, I don't want to read that. I don't want to see that. I want something that moves me. And I think that the way to do that for me and for a lot of other artists is to simply record, document, and then you later make it into its final form. And the fun thing is the final form doesn't even have to be the final, final form. Like you can, no one can tell you to stop editing. Like eventually if you have like a book contract, they might be like, you have to stop, but you can just give them that version and just edit on your own because it's yours. Um, so yeah, this this concept of, um, it is kind of like the concept of in sculpture. Now I'm not personally a sculptor. I really love like model magic and like making things, but I don't claim to be like a hammer stone kind of person, but all you have to do is take a big chunk of marble and a hammer and chisel, make up your mind what you're about to create and chip off all the marble you don't want, which is hilarious to think about of like, oh, I'm just going to get rid of what it isn't like, aha, here's a beautiful sculpture. I know not literally, that's not literally how it works. However, I think the whole like, oh, throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks, um, that really is a great way to get to it because you're like, I'm just going to make the thing and then what it isn't, I'm going to remove. 
And then once you remove it, you don't have to like kill it. It doesn't have to be gone. I have files on my computer and physical files of my art where I'm like, I'm not using this right now. Toss, it's the orphanage. Um, that's where they go. And maybe you can adopt them out later and use them in something. Maybe not. If you leave it there and then never think of it again, that's probably a good sign that it's kind of just a draft, but there's, you don't have to remove and then burn everything you remove. Um, so yeah, you're just making something and then you're chipping away what isn't it. And then you're gonna have something. A uh, writing teacher I once had described it as like the water and the well. Like when you're creating something, you're making this big well, you're filling it with water and it's all this thing. And then eventually you get like a little scooper thing, scoop it out and you're like, here you go, here's a story, here's a song. And the audience is like, wow, what a beautiful thing. They don't know about all of that there, but it had to be there for this little cup to exist. Like you can't just make a well and then have a tiny cup and hand it. That's, that's not how it works. You have, all of this is vital to it and is not something that is time wasted. and is not something that can be skipped in order to create your perfect minimalistic thing. Okay, so what's going in our well? What's going in our magpie journal? How are we getting these things? I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of time. I don't know what to do. Like, how do I even start? Good question. Something I am constantly asking myself and I will never be done asking myself, but some ways to get stuff to make art with, to get to wherever you wanna go. Junk mail. For some reason, companies still send physical mail. I don't really know why, but it's free material. You can use it to make the pages of a zine. You can rip it up and then throw the pieces. You can do anything you want with junk mail, it's junk. Packaging. So I am the person at work who's like, ooh, I'm gonna take that bit of cardboard. Ooh, I'm gonna take that abandoned thing. Ooh, this is all mine. Like you will develop a reputation though. Also like if you're okay with it and you're like, hey, I really love the environment. I don't wanna waste things, true. But like, you know, you have ulterior motives. You can both save the environment and create art. Like that can be the same thing. But if you create a reputation of like, hey, you need that bubble wrap. Hey, you need that thing. People will just kind of give it to you. Like you'll, it's, it's kind of a, a curse. Like you'll become the hoarder person who needs all these things. Um, but that's fine. Um, dollar stores. I love dollar stores. There's such random things in there and they change their stock so much. Like you can get a lot of just shiny stuff and whatever at dollar stores. Thrift stores, also completely random. Sometimes I'll go to a thrift store and be like, this is a waste of time. And sometimes I'll be like, I have too many things. Flea markets and swap meets. Some of the coolest things, these like banners, I kind of decorated for you guys. I, I tried to create an atmosphere. Um, the um, These banners were, were someone selling them at a swap meet. And I was, I will spend 50 cents to be decadent. Um, free boxes. If you live in an apartment, check and see if there's a box where people are leaving random stuff. Like some of the coolest things I own were, were people moving and they were like, I can't take all these rubber stamps. And I was like, I can. Um, yeah. Um, also, it doesn't have to be your free box. Like just any, go to neighborhoods, go to random neighborhoods, like, get on a bus, go to a random neighborhood and see like people just like leave things on the sidewalk because they don't want to deal with them. That can be yours. Um, exchanges, buy nothing groups, coworkers and friends. Like I said, if you become the person who takes things, people will give you things. Um, and then if you're like, wow, none of my friends are producing waste, I guess, um, you can go on the internet and find buy nothing groups for your neighborhood. I, one time in, when I was living in Seattle, I was on a mission to like make as many earrings as possible, but I didn't have like stones and I didn't really want earrings with stones. So I just was like, hey, does anyone have random tiny things? I had the coolest collection of random tiny things. Like on my days off, I would just go to random neighborhoods and it was like height of COVID. So like no one wanted anything to do with you. And they would just like leave a bag. Like one time I got a bag of just like plastic babies, like crawling babies. And I still have them, like a bunch of babies. And then like, just, I just, you never know what people just don't want. And it makes them happy to be like, wow, someone's going to make earrings out of that. Or like, wow, I have a magnet hedgehog that someone was like, here, make an earring. Didn't work for an earring, but now I have a hedgehog magnet. It makes them happy to know that they're, people don't actually want to tr throw things away. Like people do generally, and they're like, oh gosh, like I feel so guilty. You can help. Bad about it. You can always get rid of it later. You can throw it away, or you can find someone else who's also making art. Um, and they can use it because one man's trash is another one's treasure. And that's the last time I'll make that joke, I promise. Um, also, also, if it's literally junk, you are literally cleaning up and making art at the same time. You are growing and creating at the same time. Wow, look at you go, cool. 
Okay. So now I've gathered all these things. I've cut up all my junk mail. I've looked at all my old medical records. I've, I just have all these things. Kit, what do I do with it? Good question. Journals. If it's physical paper, you can put it in a journal. So these are examples of some of my journaling process. Um, some of this is like sort of junk journaling and just things that I have. So the one on the left was some worksheets I had and some random drawings and some diagrams. That leaf blower is bothering me, so I'm gonna close my window. Suburbia problems, I'll be right back. Can't leaf blowers are my here. enemy because they're like, where's the stuff going? It's just, you're just moving it. Like just rake it and put it, okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, that one is just sort of a random collage of various things I've written before. And then um, the one on the top is a drawing. Um, one thing about journaling is, I brought some examples with me. It's good to have different journals for different purposes. I will pretend like this is it, but I won't. I have many more journals. Also, journal person, people will give you journals. Those dollar stores I was talking about, they have journals. Great. Thrift stores have journals? Okay, thrift stores have like blank journals. People just give away journals. It's wild. Like, anyway, so the one on the top is the one that's sort of this size. This one fits great in a pocket. Um, you can do a combination of like, oh, here's a drawing. Here's I just traveled, so here's my baggage tags. Um, I don't really know what it's going to end up being, but you can just put things in there. Um, you can tell this one's pretty small by the pen underneath it, and it's in the grass, so obviously I'm not working to protect it. That's something I get a lot from people is they're like, oh, how do I start? I don't want to like ruin this beautiful notebook. I recommend starting with a not beautiful notebook. Like, get rid of that fear. Just get something that is not good. Like, okay, this, this was a dollar at Target. Okay, it has stickers now. Even the stickers are tattered, that's fine. Why would I be concerned about this random notebook from Paper Mate or whatever that is like indestructible, waterproof, like you could throw this against the wall and it would be fine. Like, yeah, get your pretty notebooks. Like I have pretty notebooks too, but I still have the fear, like even with my journaling practice of like, oh no, I'm putting something in this notebook. Um, so I recommend like, getting some like also cheap ones that you can, I, one time I heard someone say that you should just like your first one, you should just like stomp it on the ground, just like get it and stomp it and just get rid of the fear. Like it's gonna get bent. Don't let the fear of the notebook being tarnished get in the way of you just going out in the world and doing whatever. Um, Cause that's the big thing about creating under constraints. What I'm trying to get across is just, it's about like always doing it. Like, okay, I have 15 minutes on my break. I need two minutes to go to the bathroom three minutes to eat a snack, four minutes to talk to my coworker about whatever, what am I gonna do? I have this little thing in my backpack all the time. I'm eating my snack and I have it and I write down like one thing a customer said, like one thing I was thinking about, one thought I had on my commute over. Like if you're always in the process of that, it means you can gather these things and then filter them later. Like I don't, pretty much nothing I write is like just typed initially at least. Like eventually of course I have to, but I'm just constantly gathering the material for it to eventually create that form for me to eventually cut away the things that aren't it, all the things I'm talking about. So back to girl boss mode. Okay, I made something, I want to share it. Now what? So as I said, you will have to type it up. Most people will not accept your random notes. I will, like I run a lit mag and I will, but like, I'm, not everyone will. Um, so a great, and I can, I can send you this, like if you can't take notes on all this, if it's too fast, I can send you like this information. Like I said, I'm putting my um, contact information at the end. If you're like, oh, who was that account that did the thing? I, I can send it to you, it's no big deal. Um, Chillsubs.com is a great place to start. It's free and always growing. It is, last time I checked, I'm in contact with the people who made it. It's like the now the biggest independent free list source of like, places to submit art in the world, which is wild. They only started like during the pandemic, like because people really like their vibe. They are very much like what I'm trying to get across of like getting rid of the barriers to entry. Um, so check them out, create an account, it's free. Um, if you have a project where you want people to submit to, you can also create a free account. It does take a while to get approved um, because they have to prove you're not just like a random person who's, I don't know, trying to steal art or something. Um, but um, I was approved and it did take a while, but it wasn't a big deal. Um, some Instagram accounts that you can follow. Um, I listed them there at Art Open Calls, at Art Infoland, at Starving Artists Opportunities. Um, these are places that just, there's the holding house. They have like little infographics being like, this magazine is looking for cover art. This group is looking for, a lot of them are, most of them are writing or visual, but there's some sound ones as well. Um, I will be honest, this list isn't inclusive of like, if you have video projects and stuff like that, I just know nothing about that, but 
I bet if you poke around at those, like there's people who know. Um, Twitter, I don't recommend spending your quality free, like relaxing time on Twitter, but it's good for business. Like, like I've told many people, it's like cracking open your Slack channel and getting to work. Like it's not fun, but you know, you'll get there. Um, follow up those people at Shill Subs um, that I mentioned before, they have a great account. They're very funny. And a strategy I use, go through their followers and who they're following and you'll find free to submit places. Like a great thing to do is just to go and see like who, the, who their mutuals are, who they're talking to, you'll find and like make connections that way. Tags are a great place to find more of these things in all these places. Um, I put some hashtags that I've seen used for these things, art ops, call for submissions, emerging artists, subs open, art open calls. Um, and then also a little hack, you can just add like calls for submissions, um, emerging artists. Like you can literally just take these tags and then add more, is it plural or not, to just like widen your field a little bit. Um, quantity is everything. Oh my gosh. Literally. Okay. You could just be like, I have this project. It is my dream. And I, I, it must go to this publishing house. We're going to call them. There's a picture of Emily, the strange, Emily, the strange publishing house. And I need them to publish my thing. Um, and they have a three month window and I'm just going to patiently wait and hope and like really convince them you can do that. And maybe the Emily, the strange publishing house will be like, this is sickening. Awesome. Let's do it. Or they're going to be like, no, sorry, we got like 100 million submissions and yours just didn't make the cut. Um, that's going to suck. If you just like spent three months like, man, then it's going to suck. Um, and another way to do it is just to boop, 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 use your little spreadsheet, go through, oh, I have this sample. Um, it's a, I, I recommend making a list of like what finished things you have. I have this painting of a squirrel and I'm going to submit it to every nature theme thing I can find. And then if you have the list, if someone says yes, um, then you can contact the other ones and be like, hey, I actually have to pull this. Would love to work with you in the future. Every time I've pulled something because someone else accepted it, this sounds a little like a crass in career, but whatever. Um, it makes them go, ooh, other people want it. Like, please submit again. Like, I loved your work. Like, thank you so much for letting me. They always appreciate you letting them know. And it puts them in their brain that you're a publishable person and that when you try again, that they should say yes because other people said yes and what's the advantage of like having all this stuff out here there's a lot of advantages um people want to see publications i have had people not be interested in me and i know that they know who i am and then suddenly other people are interested and they're like oh okay it is kind of shallow but it is kind of how you get your foothold into these worlds um another thing is you can make friends this way i there's people on the internet who i never knew until we were both featured in the same whatever and then it's like hey you're a disabled uh writer doing this hey you're this person hey you also really like frankenstein i literally have a friend who we just really love frankenstein um you won't meet these people until you meet these people and a really great way is just to like every time i get published i when the the place is like shout out to so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so for being in this project. I just follow all of them, all of them. Quantity is everything. If you just are always putting yourself out there, you're going to hit on some people who really love what you're doing. And in addition to career benefits, you're going to get inspired. Like I get inspired by artists I know all the time. Like someone is doing this thing and I'm like, wow, like I literally had a project last year where I just responded to pretty much everything I read. And that was a really great way for me to just keep creating, keep making those connections because half the advantage these like schools and MFA programs and stuff those things but you can kind of do it on your time and like again same approaches with art making I have five minutes I'm just gonna like click follow on a bunch of things and then maybe some people will follow me back and maybe I can get some conversations started so hopefully I was on that screen long enough um, again you can tell me if you want to talk about it more okay so I'm ending this with a quote that um was used in the final official album of American rock band My Chemical Romance, which, by the way, 10 years ago said, we're done making music, guys. That was 10 years ago, and they are currently in Japan touring. So if you have taken a break like I did, if you think, oh, the ship has sailed, I'm not an artist anymore, you can wait 10 years, and then, like, you'll be even more loved because look at you go. Like, you learned so much in that time. You made more connections. You survived. You experienced the world. There's no such thing as, like, oh, I just like chilled, unless you like went to Mars and then came, though if you went to Mars and came back, that would be a good story too. So literally there's no way that a break is a bad thing. Art is the weapon. Your imagination is the ammunition. Stay dirty and stay dangerous. Create and destroy as you see fit. Thank you. Um, 
that is all my contact information. Um, please reach out um, if you have questions. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions now, but if you're like tonight when you're like, I don't know, doing whatever and you're like, oh, I wanted to ask about that, just ask me. Um, I might not get back immediately, but I probably will eventually. And if I don't, you can ask me again. Um, that's kind of what I did. I just like, I, want, I don't, I'm not looking to be, any, I can't be anyone's mentor. I don't want to have unlimited time, but I don't think you need one central mentor to show you the ropes. You can kind of just like ask people as you go along and I'm happy to be, people helped me out when I was starting out. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, yeah, so speaking of questions, does anyone have any? I can actually see. I want the link at the end so I can like listen to this and grok it all over again. <laughs> um, if that's possible, did you record? Yeah, this is all recorded, so it will be on the Nomadic Soundsters YouTube page um, in 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 the next few days, and uh, um, yeah, we'll have that link and maybe. Kit, can you send it to Anastasia or yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, it's nomadicsoundsters.com, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Cool. cool yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so it'll be up there and then I'm happy to um, email it or message it to people who um, need it. I'll make a note to email it to you. Does anyone else want like a DM email of the link? Cool. Like I said, my email is up there. So if you change your mind and you get lost on the internet, which is very easy to do, um, email me or DM me. Those are the only two social media I have. Uh, uh, Andy's question. Uh, do you consider your calendars themselves as art? Because they seem pretty artful to me. Thank you. Um, yes, I do, actually. Um, so I went to a journaling workshop like a year ago. Um, and people started talking about bullet journaling. And I, I'd i always thought of bullet journaling as some like really fancy thing that like fancy people do. And then I went on the um, subreddit for bullet journaling. It's just like reddit.com slash bullet journaling or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, these people, they call them spreads. They like draw their like days. Um, and I, I was like, this is gorgeous. Like I must do this. Turns out bullet journaling isn't really my thing because I, I don't have the consistency of creating a visual piece every single day like it but if that's your thing like that's awesome I love looking at these things very inspirational but yeah like I sort of took what I learned from that workshop and from the subreddit to create my version of the bullet journaling culture which is the idea of creating a structure that is still artful I feel like we get really stuck on this like there's the organization side and there's the art side and they must be completely separate, like right versus left brain. And I would argue combining them can feel really validating and make you more likely to use it because I wasn't really using these things if they weren't like color coded and something I could put stickers on and something I could highlight and stuff like that. Um, good question. Um, I have so many thoughts on this. Um, do you ever take art of yours that you did not like upon finishing and incorporate it into a new work? Yes. And I highly recommend it. Okay, so the first story I published last year was a story that like everyone rejected like when I first started because I, I didn't really know how to get like my work out there in the beginning. And this was like years ago, um, like 2014 or something. I wrote this short story and like the only response I got was like, this is like well-written, but like, oh, this is really like, uh, I don't know, upsetting, like, you know, take care. Um, and I just stopped submitting it. I was like, okay, it's like, you know, too weird. And then like this year or last year when I decided I wanted to get my work out, I was like, you know what? Remember that like weird, like screwed up thing I wrote? I'm going to make it weirder. I'm going to like make it so weird. And it got accepted like immediately. Like <laughs> immediately people were like, this is so good. Like, I love this. It's like my most popular story. It's on the website. Like it's, it's like in the top 10 of the most read ones of 2022, which is wild. Like it got nominated. Like I'm like, I'm floored by the response this has gotten. And to me, it was like this dead story. And I just literally like, was like, I, I opened it up, snipped it up. Oftentimes I'll physically print out my work and then like cut it up and see how it works. Um, but even with visual stuff, like I've done things where I just paste over it. Like I, or I use the pieces. Um, I had this whole file, physical file of like old drafts or like maybe I was, a cool thing to do is like test out pens and then like use that as the background of something else. Like, um, 
Yeah, so absolutely. I, I think it's really powerful to think of your own work as material and, and, and like do whatever you want with it. Um, as you can see from my journals, I'm a big fan of collage. So yeah, good question. Okay, I'm Joanna. Um, I'm just gonna read this out loud. You kind of brushed on how you have a lot of digital files as well. And I wanted to ask if you have any pointers on those of us who work mainly on the digital side. For me, my biggest roadblock is the overthinking and already jumping into the future to the point of being overwhelmed and not knowing where to start. Also, it's very easy to backspace control Z. Is that your backspace? I'm learning. Um, and basically make changes to digital work. Do you have any tips for us on how to go against that instinct so we can maybe save a great snapshot? Save as, copy paste, different versions of different things. That's the key, like, okay. So like I mentioned, I don't think editing is ever done. Like I wrote this big play last year that was rejected. That's okay, that person rejected it. It doesn't mean the play's over, but I wasn't done with the play when I submitted it. I literally was like, um, the, the abbreviation for this organization is YDS and I just created the YDS copy. I don't just do that for submissions. I also do that for my own work in my own process. So like, so I don't do that stuff because I get it. Like I can be hypercritical and I don't wanna like in a moment of like anger at myself, just like get rid of something. So I create a version, like honestly, you can create, create and destroy as you see fit. The last part of that quote is really important. It's not just creating, you can also destroy it, but like maybe keep a backup. Maybe like, you know, don't create, destroy everything. But if, if you wanna destroy stuff, it's really therapeutic to cut things up. Like you can print it out and cut it up if it makes you mad. Um, and then if you realize like, if you save a copy and then put it somewhere far away on like a G drive that you don't even look at, and then a year later, you're like still thinking about it, maybe use it. If you haven't thought about it, just delete it, it's whatever. Like we have too many things. You can you can delete things, especially digitally. Um, yeah, and for people who work primarily digitally, if it's not an access issue for you to just try something analog, I feel like people in workshops that I've talked to who don't think of themselves as analog people get a lot out of it and vice versa as digital whatsoever. Um, and then I started using the program Canva, which is a free program. And I realized you could like make digital collages and I love to do collage, right? I can transfer it. I think making yourself um, work in both and then seeing what can switch over, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I think it's about developing the, the you know, the ability to like, take a step back from your work, put it away, even if you don't like it, like the question from Tristan, it might be useful for background later. Um, who are the artists that most inspire you and are there folks on Instagram you love or traditional art or, or, or? Oh, oh, oh this is a great question. I did not cover this. Um, one of the great um, people for this style of like journaling and um, writing things down and writing down your day as like a comic and stuff like that is Linda Berry who wrote um, Making Comics. Um, uh, she, what's cool about art is that you can like completely disregard someone, something someone says and then love the rest of what they do. So some of Linda Berry's prompts, I was like, what? I don't even know what, why would I do that? But other ones I use like daily, like, um, so yeah, Linda Berry is great for just the basic approach of like, I'm gonna write down my day and I'm gonna also become a child and view the world in a childlike way. Like she has some very interesting concepts about like, we were born storytellers and then we decided to like, be really good citizens and like not think about the world creatively and we lost that like inner stuff so like reimagining the world like seeing the world like a child um and so in terms of like art Jeff Vandermeer is one of my favorite um fiction writers um I also really like Junji Ito and Jennifer Egan in terms of like Instagram follows I like following makeup artists and I like I, I don't really and I like following photographers of like abandoned buildings but that's not really like <laughs> I like the aesthetics um I'm trying to think of anyone else who's like good for this kind of thing um Killer Mac Machine Dazzle great for like what if this garbage was not garbage and it was actually tinsel to use on my magic fairy like costume um there's so many great artists out there oh oh I could go on forever maybe maybe I'll make a mailing list and like put that on my references <laughs> but um yeah, Junji Ito is, is awesome. Wow, everyone's popping up in the chat. I love this. Um, uh, oh, and then in terms of, okay, I have, I have to stop. I have to stop, but, but I must stop. 
Anthony Green is a really great musician, you should listen. Anyway, after a while, there are thousands of files in various places, digital and analog, how to organize log or know what is where. The question, I lose things all the time, but um, anything you're not using, stick on a hard drive, get rid of it, get it off your computer, just put it on, I have, okay, if you don't know what it is, this one has a sticker of Bigfoot on it. You can put any sticker you want. He's upside down. Um, you just plug this into your computer and you stick things there and then it's there and then just label your files. Put on something you like to listen to. You could try out Anthony Green. You could try out My Chemical Romance. You could try out SZA. I don't know, anything. And just name it something that makes sense to you. Um, you can even write down the names you have. You, know, you can have a notebook, a journal that is just like where things are. Um, I love dating things. I uh, like putting the date, not like, don't date your work. I mean, you could, but that's a whole other lecture. Um, like physically write down like, oh, this is this draft from the January, 2023. I have a, I have like, so you have to create bios and artist statements for like so many things, right? Because you're like, if you get published, they're going to be like, please send us a bio. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't think about that at all. Solve that problem by yourself by pre-writing it. And then anytime you get anything, you just add it to the thing. And then you can name it. Like I have a file that says bios, March, 2023. It's the most recent one that way. Like if I'm looking on my computer for just bio, I'm gonna be super lost. Um, so yeah, it's a question of constantly cleaning up things. I like to get to inbox zero. I like to get to desktop zero. I like things to just be in their proper place. Um, so yes, we love SZA. We love Jim Chia. Woot. Um, I hope that answered that. Basically, yeah. To, to sum, to sum up, um, overlabel. There's no such thing as overlabeling. Just get to the point where someone else could look at your computer and know what's what, or at least ask you. Um, yeah. This has been so wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, how many physical journals do you have going at the moment? Oh no. Okay. This is my carrying around journal. This goes to work. This is my blank carrying around journal. It, it might go to work, it might not. This is my lined big journal. It's got Monsieur Edgar Allan Poe um, on it. And this is where everything that I write goes before I type it up. Like I said, I do not primarily type things up. That's another thing, a barrier to entry for like, you know, fiction and stuff is like, oh, I don't have time to sit at my computer. You would be amazed how quickly you can like document things once they already exist like the moving my creative process to this biggest like time saver to be honest like I literally just end up like and then it's done and then I can edit as I go okay. this one's done we're not counting this goodbye um this is I can't show you the title because it's a secret but this is one project specific notebook this is another project specific notebook um this is how I track everything that isn't tracked Oh no, okay. This is Trash Wonderland. Trash Wonderland is my literary magazine. Here's another thing, Here, here's another thing. I run a magazine slash zine slash website. Um, being on the receiving end of things, there's nothing you can do that is wrong, nothing. People will send me just their work with no cover letter or anything. And it's like a mess and I live for it. Like I had people ask me the randomest questions. Just start, like honestly, like being on the receiving end, I'm like, wow, literally anything goes, anything goes. I've had editors call me names. Like I've had people insult me um, and then go on their accounts and like talk about me. So like literally, as long as you're not doing that, you're fine, you're fine. Just be a civil, nice person and like everything is good. Um, let's see what's going, it's embarrassing. <laughs> to your question, seven's a holy number though, so we're good. Um, a big revelation for me was that you can also read into a transcribing software to quickly turn analog text or thoughts into type text. Speed to text, that's a great note. Um, I um, love someone who is physically disabled for whom this is um, difficult. Um, and also, wait, you can turn written work. I am learning something new. That's so cool, wow. There's technology for everything now, man. I did not know that, that's so cool. Uh, thank you, Rodney. Um, I also brought to, to inspire you and let you know there's no rules. Here's, here's some examples of things that you can do if you are bored and want to create things. You can get statues for a dollar and paint them to look like demons. That's an option. Make your old 
containers of any kind. This is a pill bottle, it's got poems in it. This is a makeup uh, brush container, it's got more stuff in it. Um, and this is the container for the lights that are behind me. And now it has nothing in it, but it will soon. Just like I said, just keep things, even if you don't want to keep a journal, you can just keep a box and you can shove things in the box. Like just, there's a way, there's a way I promise. Uh, cool. Any other questions? Exactly, it's organized chaos to chaos. All right. Have you ever hosted creative circles? What is a creative circle? Impressive how organized yet free you are. Thank you. It took a lot to get here. I did not start out this way. Uh, that's another thing about creativity is I feel like people are like, oh, I'm creative or I'm not creative. It's not like you just start out and like are organized and are confident in yourself it's, it's it's work it's work to get there so if I had waited until I was ready I just would never have done anything <laughs> like get folks together and create together share supplies etc yes I have like um I have done that mostly with costuming and stuff like um it's really fun to like sit around and like get glue out and be like oh I have this rhinestone oh I have this um and I also like have I really like to work around other people um, and I think that co-creating is a really good idea, even if you're not ready to collaborate or not looking to collaborate, just like getting things together. But yeah, um, it's something I'd like to do more of. Um, it, it can be difficult to create um, a space that people feel free in. Um, and I, I feel like often it's like, oh, inherently, if it's creative people, putting them in a room together is going to be good. Not necessarily. So I'm really, really driven like um, to create spaces where people feel like they can be vulnerable and can share when it doesn't feel like work necessarily. So yeah, I have done that and I'm interested in doing that in the future, but I think that, um, I think that it, you know, finding the right people is, 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 is always a, a worthy goal. I have the subconscious fear of finishing a journal or notebook. So I love how you have millions of journals. I get that. You can just never finish any of them. There's no rules. I only have one journal. I love the idea of having multiple streams of journals. You also don't have to have multiple. If one works for you, the reason one doesn't work for me is because like when I had one giant notebook, I would lose where specific things were. Like I'd be like, oh, I wrote, I wrote this really cool list and then I just never find it. And for me, I would start to put like post-its and stuff to be like, oh, this was the start of this novel and here was a fragment of a song. But the way I work, like I just there was just, it was just chaos. So organized chaos for me looks like multiple. Organized chaos for you might look, look, look one. You can also try things out. If you see something works for someone else, you can try it out. Um, and then if it doesn't work for you, what's the harm? Now you have another notebook. Once you're done with this notebook, you can start on that one. I love to have pre-prepared things so I don't have to run around looking for things. Um, also gives an excuse to feed into my stationary addiction. Ahem, I mean collection. Yeah. Man, a pretty pen though. Like a pretty pen is worth it. Ross has these gel pens. Gel pens are cool. You can get different papers and you can get little envelopes and then you can send people snail mail and like people love getting mail. Like, so it's a good collection. Don't let anyone shame you for your interest in stationery and pens because as I say at work, I work at a bookstore and customers come up to me. They're like, oh, oh no, I have a problem. I'm like, listen, if your problem is books, like, I'm sorry, there are way worse things. There are way worse things. Um, yeah, I use my dinosaur pen at work and people love it. See, conversation starter. Um, the only thing is the fancy pens, they run out of ink and then I'm sad. So my fear of like using a nice notebook transcends to like my fancy pens. I'm like, oh, I must write a great sonnet with this pen. And then I'm obviously not gonna write a sonnet because what year is it? And I just have this pen, um, but You've inspired me. Maybe I could, maybe. See, I'm learning. I could have a bunch of fancy pens and then you they would run out of ink less. Um, and by fancy, I mean like pretty. I don't mean like go and buy a like hundred dollar pen. Don't do that. I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you, but like I wouldn't, I personally would not do that. I can get refills. I get them at the same time as the fancy, pretty cool pen. See, you are a font of knowledge. That's brilliant. I love that all my gel pens. Hmm. 
mushroom pen. If this workshop ends on like pens, yeah, my job is done. If anyone wants to email me and start a pen pal club where we exchange cute pens and stuff, I promise I won't take your address and do anything untoward with it. I will send you pens. Thanks for coming, Steph. Should we wrap it up? <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. I got lots of great questions there. I just wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to ask. And yeah, uh, reach out to Kit, everybody, if you have more questions um, or you want to discuss any of this more. This was so inspiring. Thank you so much, Kit. Um, I'm glad we recorded it because, yeah, personally, I want to go back and watch this again. And I'm sure other people will want to see it. <clears throat> and this will be a nice open resource for anybody who's who's struggling to with writer's block or with organization or something, they can go watch this video and and uh, get inspired. Um, so thank you. Thank you for everybody who came. And uh, do you want to have the last word, Kit? <laughs> Pens. Pens. Art is the weapon. Pens. Write stuff down. No one can stop you. Create and destroy. Rock and roll. <laughs>